Hi there, this is Talia the Dietitian and today I'm tackling what's going to be a little bit of a longer video because you guys have told me that you need help when it comes to conflicts around mealtimes, conflicts with your spouse around mealtimes when you disagree on stuff. And I totally hear you on that and I've kind of been putting it off but I'm tackling it today. I'm gonna to try to keep the video not too long um, but I really want to get all the information in there and my audience online did tell me that they would be willing to watch a longer video so I'm going to stop rambling and just get started. This is a five step guide to help you solve problems with your spouse together and at the end of the video I'm also going to give you some tips um, to really just kind of um, help with your confidence when you are tackling these problems. Um, the other thing I want to mention here is that I am very biased when it comes to my opinions, as we all are. I have enlisted the help of my husband, who prefers to remain not on camera, um, because we have disagreements, even though I'm a dietitian and I'm a, an expert in this area, we still have disagreements when it comes to parenting at mealtimes, food in general, and feeding the kids, and in a lot of other areas too just like every family and marriage. But I've enlisted his help. He's helped me with this guide um, to give the perspective of the spouse. Uh, Instagram and Facebook give me the uh, breakdown of how many people in my audience that are following me are male and female. And it's like 97% female. And on YouTube, it's like 100% female. So I know this is a problem for women who are most likely watching this. So know that I'm giving you the perspective of my husband, who is quite a stubborn fellow and um, isn't always receptive to ideas for changing. So, so I really hope this guide gives you all the tools that you need um, because I've helped my husband. My husband has helped me um, write this for you. He also um, is a team leader in business. So he's pretty good at uh, managing people and communication with people. So without any further ado, let's just get right into it. The first step in the guide is to discuss the problem. And for this, we both recommend discussing it at either at rest time, nap time, or after bedtime. When you have time, when you've had some time to decompress from whatever you've had going on in your day, and you can sit together without anyone listening to you, without being distracted by a child that may need your attention. So that's the, the first step, finding a time and maybe discussing it ahead of time like, oh, hey, you know, I'd like to discuss something after dinner tonight, after bedtime, kind of schedule it in so that your spouse doesn't feel like they're being uh, bombarded or ambushed. So that's step one. When you're discussing the problem, um, give an example of the problem. And I'm just going to use an example that um, a, a mother had sent to me in a message. And that was that her child wanted more egg at this meal, but she wasn't eating the broccoli or the toast. And mum wanted to give seconds of the egg and dad wanted to withhold the egg and not give seconds. So that's what you're discussing in step one. And then in step two, uh, you want to discuss the logic. What is the reasoning behind dad not wanting to give seconds? And really keep asking questions until you get to the bottom of their logic. Is it to do with food waste? Is it dietary related. Um, and those are the two that I'm going to focus on today just because those are what the ones that typically crop up for families. So really get to the root cause. What is going on logic wise that your spouse doesn't want to give that additional egg? So that's step two. Step three is what is, is the technique that you're going to try to solve the problem? So when you've got this problem with the egg, um, what techniques can you try? So an example might be if it's a food waste problem, what can you control to help with that? Though the first thing that would come to my mind that you can control is the portions that you're giving your child. Um, I always recommend starting with small portions to uh, prevent food waste. You can always give more. So in this case, if you know your child is going to eat the egg, you give them a regular size portion of the egg. Um, but if you know that they may not eat the toast or the broccoli, you give them a smaller portion of both the toast and the broccoli to start with. And that way you're less concerned with the food waste because you've only given them a small portion to begin with. And if they need more, you just give them more and you've solved the problem. 
And if you're talking about a dietary concern, that for example, you don't want to give your child so many eggs, perhaps you've heard that they've got cholesterol in them and they shouldn't be having too many. Um, let me first just say that the guideline is, is one egg per day for a child. Um, however, in the real world, most people don't give their child one egg every day. So if you're going multiple days between eggs, that's really great. We want kids to have plenty of variety. And so with that being said, if today is the day that you're giving eggs and your child eats one and a half, two, two and a half eggs, you could discuss with your husband that for the rest of the day, you won't be giving them egg. And then for the next day, you don't have to give them any egg. And that is a fine solution from a nutrition standpoint would be fine. Um, and obviously you don't tell your child like, oh, you've eaten two eggs, you're not getting any more eggs. Um, but it's something that you and your husband would have an understanding of, oh, the child ate two eggs today. So we're not gonna give eggs for another day or two days or three days or whatever makes you feel comfortable that works in your family's flow. Um, so that's step three is coming up with that technique. That brings us to step four, which is the action plan. So you've got your sm small change that you're going to make. For example, this case was the broccoli and the egg. Um, and you want to come up with how long are you going to try this for? And I would say a minimum of three days, um, depending on what it is, you might want to go for longer, like a week. Um, or you can say, we'll check back in in three days and see how this is going and make adjustments as necessary. My husband and I usually do three days, but that might not work for another family. And so you want to also offer a regular check-in point. My husband is extremely stubborn. <laughs> he doesn't, he, pro he is not somebody that would want to do a check-in after every meal, but your spouse may want to check in with you after every meal. How did it go? What did I feel about that? What can I change? You know, what do you think about this? Um, maybe you do a check-in once a day um, in the evening once your child's gone to bed uh, or maybe you do a check-in after the period of time you've agreed to test this experiment for so if it's three days you would just check in after three days that's the one my husband would be going for um, and then you come back and that takes us on to step five and step five is the review step so you come back together after your three days or one week and you talk about what results you got and was your problem solved with the result? So for example, if it was food waste, were you both comfortable with giving the small portions and that worked really well? And if your problem is solved, that's really great. You move on to the next small problem. And if your problem wasn't solved, you talk about uh, why it wasn't solved and what, what's the technique that you're gonna try next. Um, and, and come up with that together. It really helps when you know that your solution might not be the one that is going to work, but it's about working together um, and not worrying about who's right or wrong or who's winning and losing. In the end, the, the person that wins and loses the most is your child. And being on the same team with your spouse will help get you to that goal. We want our child to eat a, a balanced, healthy diet, and we want as best we can to avoid conflict with our spouse. So by working together and not focusing on who's winning or not winning or came up with the winning solution, um, it's more important to work together on these techniques um, and problem solve together. So if your problem didn't get solved, you go back to step one um, and, and come up with a new technique. And I would recommend going into this review meeting that you have your next one to three action items that you would like to work on. If your problem was solved, you can move on to the next problem. And if you are going into this meeting, not sure if your problem was solved, um, maybe have a couple of ideas of tweaks to the technique that you can try to solve the problem again when you go back to step one and, and go through the process again. So now um, I want to share some tips that can really help you um, when you're talking through this with your spouse. If you need to get up and have a little stretch, I know this is a kind of a long video, but this kind of, this brings us to the tips. And these tips are really important when you're going through this. It'll help you work as a team, be a bit more cohesive, be in the right mindset, um, and help you kind of avoid things that, at least with my husband, uh, would escalate the problem into an even bigger problem. So the first tip is actually mine, and that's to avoid going in with too many things that you wanna change, so too many problems. So in step one, um, we talked about going in with a small problem to change, 
And depending on your spouse and how receptive and motivated they are, um, you can go in with between one and three small changes that you want to make. So I gave the one example of the broccoli. You may have th up to three things, depending on how receptive your spouse is. My husband is very stubborn and not super receptive with these types of situations. So I know that I would go in with just one. And then once we've solved that, go to the next one. Um, you want to avoid going over three um, because this is something, we, you know, we learned in dietitian school in our, my master's with counseling is that when you give someone more than three things to change and three would be the most motivated person um, that can be just overwhelming um, and can cause resistance or that you you don't quite get the changes implemented that you want to change so focus on less rather than more so up to three things depending on how receptive your spouse is tip number two is um, avoiding blame and avoiding statements that use the word you like you do this and or when you do this it causes this um, so in the situation with the egg you wouldn't let me give her more egg or you know she wanted more and you didn't let her have more so avoiding as my husband said just avoid you statements as best you can um, and help that helps not blame the other person or set it up that they have done the wrong thing. Again, we want to be a team um, and that we're trying to solve this problem together. And so that brings me to tip number three. Be confident that experimentation will solve the problem. Go into this meeting with your spouse confident that you both can come up with a technique that will solve the problem. It's not necessarily that your technique or the idea that you have is the one that's going to solve the problem. It may need tweaking. It may not work for your child at all. Every situation is nuanced and every family, spouse and child is different. So being confident that you can both solve the problem versus being confident that you have the solution to the problem. And this is a really difficult thing for us because, you know, we... We're the mums. We we uh, many mothers are with their children more than the the, the husband or the spouse, um, and that can be really difficult um, when you're having these discussions because you're coming from two very different perspectives. Uh, but being confident that you can both come up with a technique that will create a solution that is favourable to everybody involved, both of you and your child. And then the last tip is tip number four, which my husband tells me all the time, which is to listen more than you talk and to ask a lot of questions. And asking a lot of questions is really important when we go back thinking about step number two, which was getting to the root of the logic of your spouse's logic. Why won't you let me give or why won't I just did what I said not to do? Why wouldn't that dad give additional egg to the child? really asking questions. Why is that a problem? Have them really think about it because sometimes if it's dietary related, they may just think, oh, I've heard that you shouldn't eat more than this many eggs a day. But by really teasing that apart and getting to the root of that, why have you, where have you heard that? Why, you know, why have you heard that? Not in a accusatory way, but in a way of like really trying to work on why they do feel that they can't give their child more egg. Um, and so getting to that root cause together in a way that you are um, working together to solve this problem will be really, really helpful. And again, this is messy. Parenting is messy. Um, spouses are messy. We're, by the end of the day, we're really tired. Um, we're not always at our best. Um, this isn't a perfect process, but I do hope that this guide has given you some action item tips um, so that when you do go into these conversations with your spouse, you are feeling confident and you have a few things up your sleeve to really help you reach your goal, which is to solve the problem for both of you and to work together to help your child around mealtimes. So drop me a comment and let me know uh, how, how it went for you when you tried this with your spouse and what they thought of it. If you have a spouse watching, leave me your comment and I uh, look forward to reading it. Um, and if you found this video helpful, which I really hope you did, please subscribe to my channel and turn your notifications on so you never miss a future video. And this is Talia the Dietitian. Thank you so much for watching. Parenting is really hard. I'm here to support you and help you with this eating journey.